Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, before we get too far into the video, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that helps to get my channel promoted. I really appreciate that. Uh, I also love it if you'd leave a comment, uh, suggestions for videos, um, constructive criticism, um, you know, how you do things, or just questions are always great things to leave in the comment section. So uh, quite a while ago, almost back when I first started the channel, I did a video about uh, setting a coin and how to do that. And it's been a pretty popular video. And recently someone asked me if I could show how to set a coin that had an irregular um, shape to it. Um, the actual piece of, uh, piece of metal that a coin is stamped on is called a flan. And uh, oftentimes with old coins, especially ancient coins, uh, the flans were really irregular. And so sometimes setting them can be challenging. The previous video that I did was just kind of a regular um, coin that was uh, consistent and round. And I'll do one like that, uh, but I'm going to make a slight difference to it. I'm going to put some twisted wire rope around that one. Uh, and then I'll show how to do, uh, how to set an ancient coin that has an irregular flan. And then I'm going to do one that has a hole in the middle. I've come up with a creative way to set that and make it kind of a fidget uh, pendant. So we'll see how that works. Either way, you're getting three different ways to set coins. And I hope you enjoy it. So before we get started... I wanted to thank some people. I want to thank my patrons over on Patreon. They're my core group of supporters. I have a new one, Judy. I wanted to thank you for signing up. I appreciate your support. I think you will find that the group of people over there is super nice and very knowledgeable and willing to share what they know. So uh, get to know them. Uh, check out the Discord channel over there. Uh, there's a lot of nice people there, so it's a nice community. And thank you, uh, previous patrons, for making it that way. I really appreciate that, as well as your financial support. Uh, the other group is my YouTube subscribers. We just passed uh, 14,400, I believe, and that's amazing, and I appreciate it. Uh, some of the comments I get in the YouTube uh, comment section are truly kind and uh, oftentimes moving because people tell me how I've pulled them out of a slump, a creativity slump, or whatever, and uh, that really makes me happy when I hear that kind of stuff, so thank you for that. Thank you also for the financial contributions like the Buy Me A Coffees and the Super Thanks. Those things help with the cost of materials these days, so I appreciate that. Um, with those things being said, let's get started on these three uh, coin settings. This is one of the varieties of my design idea books you can find on the merch store. Uh, these recent ones, I've started putting some conversion charts on the back. This one has fractions of an inch to decimals to millimeters, which I find pretty useful anymore since I'm trying to use millimeters and the metric system more. Uh, I also have a nice grid pattern in the background, uh, which is hard to see on camera, but it's subtle so it doesn't get in the way of your drawing up your designs. But it helps me to keep things kind of symmetrical because I'm not terribly good at freehand drawing stuff. So. <laughs> All right, so um, I picked out three coins to do here. First one is going to be this little silver um, elk uh, quarter from Canada. And I'm just going to do kind of a plain bezel setting with a rope around it and then a, a, what I call a sandwich bale. Um, if you want to see how to do some of these bales, I have a findings playlist. I'll put a link to my findings playlist up there. And you'll find all sorts of interesting ways to finish up your pieces there. So check that out. Um, because I probably won't make that on camera. I'll just do the setting itself. Uh, same way with this. There's a, this is my standard bale uh, that I use for a lot of things. And it's a, a nice classic looking bale. But we'll be doing uh, that one on this ancient Roman coin, which is a denarius of Faustina, who was uh, married to, um, who was it? Uh, Antonius Pius, I think. And this was back in the year 100 to 140 um, current era, or AD. And so the denarius was kind of their primary unit of currency in the Roman Empire. Um, you'll notice, though, that on this, when they stamped it, uh, the flan split on the edges a little bit. And so we're going to have to, doing a bezel around that would be kind of, um, it wouldn't look that great, I don't think. And so we're going to do this one with some little tiny prongs and a frame for it to rest in. Um, finally, I have this coin here from, um, I think it's Denmark? Yeah, Denmark. And it's got a hole in the middle. And so I thought it would be kind of fun to make it into a fidget pendant. And so I'm going to um, create a silver tube 
and then a frame for this and then we'll mount it on the tube and then uh, use a dapping punch to kind of curl that around so it's fixed on there but still is able to spin and I'll just put a little couple of jump ring bales on here and I think that'll be a fun one so that's a little bit different way to set a coin it only works if you got a, a hole in the middle though um, with coins as a as a coin collector uh, I'm not a big fan of, of people polishing coins uh, I like to leave the tones on them as they are it also damages the surface of the coin when people polish them so I'll be doing these I'll be putting these in the settings after I've polished the settings so and being as careful as I can not to make any kind of mars to the coin especially this ancient coin so because those are unique and truly interesting I think all right so let's start with this one I'll set these to the side for now and we're just going to start like you would with a regular uh, cabochon stone and we're going to make a bezel for it I'm going to use 3 16 inch uh, fine silver bezel strip in 26 gauge which is uh, 4.76 millimeters tall this way and 26 gauge is uh, 0.41 millimeters thick I believe so let's file this with a nice flat surface this is way taller than I will need but I will file it down to the appropriate level when you're doing a coin since it doesn't have kind of a dome on it it's just flat on top we're gonna file the bezel towards just barely above the edge of the coin and then just uh, push it in so it just barely gets a grip on the top edge there but doesn't cover any of the coin I think coins, coins from around the world are kind of fun. You can find some really cool looking coins that have fun pictures on them. But this one is uh, during when they were still making them out of silver. I have a number of uh, Canadians in my Patreon group too. I know the dollar coins have loons on them or, and are generally uh, slang wise referred to as loonies. Another country that has a lot of cool coins, well, actually a couple of countries, um, Australia and New Zealand all have coins that have cool animals and stuff on them. I have a pretty good faction of patrons in Australia as well, so. So if you've never been to my channel before, I use hard silver sheet solder for most everything. I use a liquid flux that I dribble on generally, and sometimes I spray it on. And my torch is a Smith Silversmith uh, Selling Air Torch, which is a great torch. And perfect for silversmithing as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I use a number one tip on that too. And that's the majority of the questions people ask me as far as my equipment. I used to get a lot of questions about these shears. They're just Fisker's craft shears. They work pretty well for a lot of thin metals. If you're new to this, we always flux the metal before we solder. That supposedly cleans the metal, any oxides that are formed on there, and also puts a little coating on it to prevent it from reoxidizing under, under the heat which silver has a tendency to do. It speeds up the process. Well, we should really just put that right there. Mm. <laughs> so I did kind of a poor job of uh, soldering that one because I got it uh, hotter on this side than this side, so the solder, when it flowed, it jumped onto the side that was hot enough to melt it. And uh, so I added another piece and then did the same thing so to lay puddle together to correct my mistake. All right, let's shape this back into a circle. You can do this however you want. I just tend to use my pliers, at least for the most part. I had some fun coins from the Bahamas. They were pennies and they had 
these cute little starfish on them. I used to make earrings out of them. But then I ran out. Seems like a good excuse to go to the Bahamas. To me. <laughs> Size-wise we did pretty well. So I like to make it so that the back of the coin is also exposed so you can see it. Uh, being a coin collector. And so I'm going to create a, a little platform out of a thin, I think, 16 gauge wire. Let's use a 16 gauge to see how that works. And that's a little. It'll be a big enough platform where it'll support the coin, but. Not so big that it covers up a lot of what you want to see on the back side. If you're not a coin collector, they call the front of a coin, usually the side that has a head on it, the obverse, and then the other side, the reverse. So I'm going to be putting the elk head forward. Nothing personal, Elizabeth. That's going to get me pretty close. Make sure everything's tucked in there. They really cut it slightly long, so I'm going to cut it. I'm going to make a mark just a little bit beyond where they they meet, uh, and then I can snip out little pieces until it fits in there perfectly. At this stage, if you can get it from having any any uh, wobbles sideways, that helps too. If not, we'll go back and do it again before we solder it in. I'm just going to push this down. Make sure it's flush all the way around on the bottom. And the easiest way I've found to do it is to make a little circle of pieces of solder, pretty good sized ones. Let me cut some more big ones here make sure to have plenty of solder because I don't want any gaps between the bezel and this little platform that I put in there. It's going to go sitting on top of those like that. I remember when I first realized that you could set pieces on top of solder and that, and that the solder would not be defeated by gravity. It would continue to wick up into seams. That makes a lot of soldering operations much easier. You just set it on top of a piece of solder. On these ones, I'm just going to heat the outside just like I would normally for a bezel to, to get the bottom to solder on. This time, though, we're just going to try and get that solder to wick up in that seam. The stuff that's not in contact if the bottom of your bezel isn't quite perfectly flat generally won't unless when it starts to puddle, some of it touches the See that jumped up in there. There's a couple over here that weren't quite touching. I'll put a little pressure on them like that from above. And make sure it's hot enough, they'll just suck right up in there. Take a minute and file this flat on the bottom. This is one of the few things that it's alright to stick a something into your setting before you're ready to go because you have an open back, you can push it right back out. <laughs> okay, so let's add some twisted wire. I made this twisted wire out of some 20 gauge. And I took two pieces of 20 and just twisted it with my drill. Um, so let's file this flat. When you're cutting your wire to go tight around something like this, if it's twisted wire, you always want to make it really super tight. Um, because this stuff has a tendency to pull and stretch a little bit. And if it ends up being slightly bigger than what you're trying to wrap it around, it's going to look sloppy. It's going to have inconsistent soldering along the edges. And then what will people say? They'll say, don't buy Chad's jewelry. He's got gaps in his soldering. Nobody wants that. Alright, so um, twisted wire acts like a wick, uh, 
particularly badly. So if you don't want it to run all the way along the entire length when you solder this, um, just flux just that part and it'll kind of prevent most of that from happening. If you don't care, go up the whole thing. <laughs> it does make it a little stiffer to bend, but I kind of like that because it's you're just trying to get it pretty consistent right now. So let's, let's get it to run the entire length. It's going to only solder it to the bezel anyway. So. It'll be fun. Okay, so I do something called pick soldering, which makes things really easy um, for me. And if you're interested in learning how to do it, I'll put a, a link up there for you. It's a super useful skill. It allows you to pick up a little bit of solder like that. Now, once you get the piece here heating up to temperature, you can just touch it where you want it to go. And it jumps on like that. So, I'm going to have a little bit over here just for this. So that ran the entire length of it. So just had to move a little bit there. Alright, so I'm going to kind of try and gently get this all straightened out and round. And if you try and round it out on the mandrel, you're likely to stretch it a little bit. Um, having some solder flow there will help you to keep it from stretching as much, like I just did. What I'm watching for here is to see if there's any gaps in the solder joint between the twisted wire and the outside of the bezel. And if there is, we'll add a little bit more solder if we need to. Twisted wire does soak up a lot of solder and, and that'll start to eat into the definition of it so you won't see as much detail in time. coins you can buy pre-made bezels for. They make them in uh, the factory. But it's nice to know how to make some settings for things that are non-standard coins, you know, no longer made or you know, like we're doing an irregular shaped coin. So if you remember on this one, it's going to do a little sandwich bale. And this is what my sandwich round sandwich bale looks like anyway. It's got a top on it for the chain to, to go under and then this bottom part here with two pieces of sheet and that's going to go over a ring that's attached to the top of this. So the chain can go through there and the ring goes through the bottom. manageable I think. I'm going to cut a little piece out of it. We do it kind of like like that. So we'll need to file that flat so it butts up against her nicely. And I think I'll solder one side first and then the other side after I put this on. This is one of those situations where you're soldering something small to something big. You put most of the heat on the bigger piece so that they reach temperature at closer, closer to the same time. The little one takes very little time to get up to the soldering temperature, but the big one takes a little bit longer. a little bit. Let's see which side looks better. Let's go to this side, this side probably.
trick now is get that to solder without soldering anything to that. So if we focus most of the heat just on this big piece and kind of ignore the bale, the bale is unlikely to get up to the soldering temperature. So you can hopefully you just pick a little bit in there. You could use uh, you know easy solder or something like that if you wanted to. I'll take away some of the risk. There we go. All right, so we'll let him pickle for a while. We'll get on with the second one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a frame that fits just underneath the coin uh, and follows the, the outside of it relatively well. Let's see, I'm just going to use a 16 gauge square wire for the bottom. I'm going to cut myself a shorter piece so I don't have to deal with all of that floppiness. All right, so we're going to make kind of a non-circle circle. I use my marker periodically to mark where I need to bend something. So if I'm starting right from that point. Make it about right there. Set her to the side so I don't mess her up. One of the things that I found that was interesting when I first started thinking about collecting ancient coins uh, was just how common uh, Roman coins are. The Romans minted a ton of coins because each time there was a new emperor, he had to mint a bunch of uh, money with his image on it. So the Romans were around for a long time. So I'm going to kind of go this rough part of the, I'm going to kind of go underneath this edge over here so none of it sticks out. That's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to cut it off right where they cross. And then we'll solder those together. things like this flat. All right, so I'm thinking that as far as hanging nicely, there's an ornamental thing, but also uh, allowing you to see some history. If I did a prong here, prong here, I'm going to move this one in just a little bit. There and there. I don't want to have a lot of, uh, I want it to be firmly in there, but I don't want a lot of, you know, metal rubbing happening. So, I think maybe if I, if I do one right, Right where that notch is, that'll not do too much damage, or do any damage, hopefully. Right, right between those two letters there. Ground one of these magnesia blocks. These are handy when you need to do some vertical kinds of stuff. Let's see, let me make sure I have this right side up. <laughs> that would be like me to do that. I'll do the one across from it. Next. Okay. Maybe this one. Okay, 
so the other thing is we ought to put a loop on there while we're here. So let's make another one of those rings. Need it to be very big either for the sweat. I might. Here's the bale that I made for it. So we need a ring for that to go through. Let's see. So I think we'll try and kill two birds with one stone here. Solder this ring on at the same time. Why not? So we'll get everything all flexed. Let me make sure I have some little pieces of solder. Some days, I tell you. I'll try and get this soldered first here. Looks like a little guy with his uh, legs and arms straight up while he's laying on his back. Doing these little problems. I'm just going to push this part of the way in and then I'll just pick out of that top piece. Then we can pickle this one. Copacetic on that one, I think. So let's let that pickle for a while, too. Third one, we can start by making a little frame, I think. Or no, actually, let's start by making the tube that goes through the center of the coin. So we need to figure out how big of a tube we need to make. I'll probably use 26 gauge sheet to do this, but we can maybe. Maybe, maybe, and we'll get a pretty good idea how wide that hole is. So inside of it, it's about three millimeters, one, two, three, three millimeters with a little bit of space. And so if we use our math skills here, <laughs> Supposing we have some, which I don't know is. Diameter is three, right? So pi times diameter equals circumference, and that'll give us a rough estimate of how wide to make the piece of sheet to cut to make that kind of a tube. So we go three times four is 12, four, three is nine. So two decimal places, 9.42, um, millimeters. Okay, so let's 
just get this kind of sort of in the shape we want it to be in. That's pretty darn good. Let me, uh, I think our math paid off. I knew I, I was glad I paid attention in seventh grade, or whatever that was when I learned that. <laughs> Let's get these kind of ready to solder. <laughs> Quit tipping over on me. Say thank you to all the people who uh, recently bought my ebook. I really appreciate that. If you haven't heard of it, it's kind of a guide to my 2023 videos. There's extra information about each of the tutorials I did in 2023, so it might be useful for you if you're trying to learn how to do this kind of stuff. Summer's winding down. We'll be working on assembling one for 2024, so we have it uh, ready a little bit sooner in the year than we did this time. Oh my gosh, that's like right on the nose. That's pretty darn good. That was better than I expected. So let's use that square wire again, 16 gauge. We'll make a circle that's just the uh, same size as the coin. Now I arbitrarily chose three spokes, sort of because this has a I'm not sure how you say it, but a uh, symmetry that's threefold like that. <laughs> See, I'm out of practice as an English teacher. If you wanted to do, you know, five spokes, that'd be all right. Different spokes for different folks. Oh my god, I just did a dad joke. That only someone uh, who was my age would understand anyway, probably, idiom-wise. <laughs> Let's solder that one on. I think I have a few pieces of solder left here. Okay, so I, I filed it uh, so it was smooth, and I used a marker to make it dark, and then I lined up my little tube. Uh, not so much to the center uh, of the actual silver part here, but 
to where the center should be if this is lined up pretty well on the chart behind it. So now I'm just going to take this over and cut that out with the saw and then I'll be right back and we'll solder that in. Hopefully it'll be pretty close to the center. So I did two things. I cut those out with the saw and then I filed them a little bit until it fit in there perfectly. And I also cut a little half circle out of that 16 gauge round wire that I used for the other piece. Um, and I'm going to run a couple of 16 gauge round rings through there to be the veil. So let's solder all this together. I'm going to put a little bit more on this one. Can't really see all that well. I'm going to try and get just the rings hot enough to, to flow, so let's see if we can do that. Again, this is one of those spots you could use a little easy if you wanted to. We still have movement, so I think we're good. I'm probably going to set the, the Roman coin off camera because I don't want to be holding my hands underneath the camera. I, might, I, I want to make sure I don't damage the coin. But I'm just going to kind of gently bend the prongs uh, over it. So, so this here is how that's going to go. Um, so I'll set this one. And that, that just is going to entail filing this down just a little bit and dapping it uh, so this flares out. And then you'll have a, a coin you can spin. That'll be kind of a fun little pendant. Uh, this one will just bezel set. But like I said, the Roman one I'll do off camera because I don't want to damage the coin and I want to take my time. So uh, I'll be back when these are all pickled. Okay, I'll just show you this one right off the bat. I went ahead and uh, set those prongs down on them. I thinned out the prongs with my Dremel using a, an abrasive white wheel and then just kind of gently laid them down over that. So we got a nice little Roman coin. Um, this one filed it down to where it's just barely above the, the rim of that uh, coin. Made sure it's sitting how I want it to sit in there. And then I'm going to use my chain those pliers, this flat part here, and just kind of roll that up against there as tight as it'll go. I'm pushing down with my thumb at the same time here to make sure it's tight down in there. Last, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rounded part here and just kind of, without hitting the coin, rub that top edge and push it closer in. I'm going to be careful not to slip while you're doing this because I'm applying quite a bit of pressure so it would be easy to slip and scratch the coin so be careful. So I'll, <clears throat> I'll likely use a blue silicone wheel on my rotary tool to smooth that out just a little bit. The last one I have here, I filed that tube down to 
it just a little bit above this to try and kind of flare that out. I got that one a little tight. If I was to do it again, I probably would uh, cut that tube just slightly longer. But I bet if you work this back and forth a few times, you get it loose again to where it'll spin pretty well. And you can fidget with it if you're bored. So it's kind of a fun, uh, different style. Of... Okay. Well, I'll get those finished up, and I'll take some better pictures and put them at the end. All right. Well, that was three different ways to set coins, including some ones with irregular flans. And I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. And um, take a moment and uh, check out my channel page. I have uh, 380 plus videos now. I've been doing this for almost three years at three videos per week. So there's a ton of content to choose from. And there's almost certainly something else you'll find interesting as well. So check out a few more videos, like them, and then come back and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Um, the last thing is check the video description down below for some important links. You'll find a link to my Patreon site if you're interested in that community and finding out about that. Uh, there's a link to where you can buy my ebook. Uh, there's a link to Pepe Tools if you're interested. I'm an affiliate with Pepe Tools. If you click that link and then buy something over there, it helps me, helps you, and helps Pepe Tools. Uh, and there's also a link to my merch store if you want to get yourself one of those nice design idea books that I showed you at the beginning. So. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, take care. And happy silversmithing.